Hi everybody, my name is Wendy Pirelli and I am gonna hopefully take about 10 minutes to tell you seven ways to use intent data. Uh, maybe you don't have 10 minutes. <clears throat> That's the case, we've created a QR code for you to scan with your phone so that you can get this in a report instead and you can look at it whenever you've got time. Uh, it's got some bonus material in there as well so if you'd like to scan it, you can go ahead and scan that now. If you uh, don't have your phone, uh, we will put this QR code <clears throat> on again at the end of the session. So let's talk a little bit about intent data. Um, you know, everyone wants to use intent data. It's the, it's the hot new thing, right? So 51% of people said that they're using intent data in 2020. That's supposed to grow to 70% in 2022. Big growth. The problem is 67% of those people said, we don't actually know what to do with intent data. And I think that's I think that's pretty common. Um, so before we stop, talk about what to do with it, let's talk a little bit about what intent data is because not all intent data is created equal. So for example, first party intent data, I think we know what that is. As you can see down there at the bottom of the examples, your website, social media channels, that's really great intent data because they've come to your website. So their level of, of, their level of interest is, is fairly high. So, um, so that's always a great source for intent data. <clears throat> But what about some of these others? So for example, Bitstream data is, um, it, this type of data is collected using an ad pixel that's shared through ad exchanges with biddable ad space. So this usually generates huge volumes, but, um, and it's usually like topic specific, but the quality is really low. So um, as you can see, it's available as a, lot of, uh, as a part of a lot of the ABM platforms because it's easy to get access to but it doesn't show a huge true amount of intent. Co-op data, on the other hand, is sourced from a group of pub publishers and web websites that pool data together so that they can have access to a larger data set. As you can see, this can be anywhere in the funnel. Um, it's usually based on articles that have a, a wide range of topics, because again, it's coming from publishers. And so the level of intent is, is medium because you don't know what the article was about. And a good example of that is Bumbora. Maybe you guys have heard of that. The other thing is B2B media websites. So, you know, for anybody who's been in demand gen, Tech Target's been around a long time. Uh, you know, they've got their own intent engine. And um, for those of you that know, Tech Target does their intent through people who have engaged with content in the Tech Target community. A lot of times, again, those articles are stories about, <clears throat> you know, trends or industry insights or things like that that show that they're interested in a topic, but not necessarily maybe a specific vendor or, you know, or your company in particular. So um, the level of intent is, you know, again, medium to low. It's a very top of the funnel type of activity. Review platform data um, is a lot of times things like PeerSpot, ourselves, G2, and Peer Insights. These um, types of um, sites are places where people come, they've written reviews or they're reading reviews and doing comparisons of product A versus product B. And so as you can imagine, unlike you know, you're reading an article about um, a specific industry, when you start to read an article about a specific product or a re review about a specific product or company, um, you're much farther down the buying cycle and therefore your level of intent is much higher. You're obviously in a purchasing phase. So uh, review platforms like, again, PeerSpot, um, G2 and Peer Insights, those are places where you may find people that are uh, more engaged and ready to buy. So here's a little timeline that kind of helps you understand what people think about when they're going through the buying process. So. Um, you know, all the way over here on left, on the left-hand side, number one, uh, at the beginning of the buying process, they conducted anonymous research on potential solutions. I'm sure you can imagine yourself buying, you know, a new refrigerator or something or a new car. So you start to do some research, you de develop an informal list of maybe potential providers who you might want to buy. You start to collect primary information on like, how much is this going to cost? You might bring in other members Again, in the refrigerator example, you might bring in your, your spouse or your roommates to understand you know, what, 
what's important to us in this new refrigerator. Then you'll evaluate which solutions would fit well together with existing partners. So, you know, hey, maybe you can't get a 45-inch refrigerator. You've got to only get a whatever, 28-inch because it won't fit with the other things that are in your kitchen. Um, and then you, you seek out input from industry analysts. So again, you might go out and, you know, read a consumer, consumer report or something on, on what's happening with, you know, what industry analysts think about this thing. And then you're going to go seek out input from peers and existing users in the community. So now this is where you, you know, go and start to ask people, Hey, thinking about buying this brand. What do you think about this? Did you have any problems with it? Um, and then from there, you, you'll start to reach out to what stores sell this, right? And how can I go and like purchase this, this, um, this item? And so, you know, again, that's a personal example, but you can see how that would apply to, um, to tech in walking through the different stages. And so stage seven is where we often find those peer reviews because again, they're very late stage and they're looking for input from people who have used it. So what are seven ways to use intent data in marketing? So number one, wake up dormant leads in your CRM. Uh, so I think that's pretty straightforward. You've got, you know, your standard CRM system. This is a good way to go in and identify, hey, these people are engaging with a very late stage. Again, in the review platform perspective, a very late stage um, uh, platform. And so, you know, for example, let's say Home Depot is coming in and comparing product A to product B and they were a cold lead in your CRM. Use that information, that intel, to go make them a warm lead. Number two, upgrade your lead scoring. Again, this is a great opportunity to say, well, you know, what does good look like? And so knowing, again, when people are standing in the store, you know, after they've had a conversation ready to buy, um, how do you want to change those lead, the, the lead scoring? What, do, what does... Um, what does that lead look like? What does that behavior look like? And so obviously people who have engaged with a late stage uh, platform, again, should be given additional lead points to show that they're ready, they're ready to buy. Paid media, this is what a lot of people start with, with their um, ABM plans and intent data, right? They look at, hey, I have a target account list and I want to use this intent data um, now to understand on my target account list who is engaging and what should be my kind of bullseye list versus my um, one to many versus one to few. And I'll do a paid media program to those one to many, and I'll really focus in on my one to few with a, you know, more high touch campaign. So paid media is obviously a great way to understand um, uh, or use the intent data to know where to focus your paid programs. Uh, validating other intent sources. So again, that's just more of a comparison of like, hey, I got these this intent data from Tech Target, and it says. Home Depot is in a high intent um, category, but have they gone over and looked at a comparison? Have they talked to reviews, have or talked to peers? Have they looked at review sites? If you see that gap in there, you're probably going to think, well, hmm, maybe they're maybe more top of the funnel on intent versus bottom of the funnel. Identifying buying companies on your ABM list. This kind of goes back to the paid media comment. So, you know, again, a lot of us have ABM and um, ABM target lists. And so here's an opportunity to create that bullseye so that you can go after those, uh, those ones that are low hanging fruit and convert those quickly while you nurture the others. Supplementing your ABM list. This is a great use that, you know, I didn't even think about, which is let's say you've got this great target account list that you've developed, you know, with many, many hours with your sales organization and some other data. And again, all of a sudden Home Depot comes out of the blue and they are comparing your offering to, to your competitor's offering and they're not even on your ABM list. Here's an opportunity to take that visibility and now add that person, add that company to your ABM list. Um, again, it's a bluebird, low hanging fruit. You're going to be able to, to, to close a deal that wasn't even on the list that should have maybe been on the list. And then of course, the last one, which maybe should have been the first one, is um, build your build your ABM list. It's a great way to understand who is in a late stage buying cycle. 
um, and where to really focus your 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 spend. Um, I know we all want to see conversion, and the best way to drive conversion is to be focused. And so um, this is a great way to, you know, again, you're having a conversation with your sales leadership to understand which are the target accounts they want to go after. Here's another really rich piece of intent data that says, you know, yeah, great. I want to go after these 47 baseball stadiums, but um, your sales team may say that. But you can come back and say, yeah, but these 47 accounts are actually looking to buy something. So maybe we should start with those. So, um, so another great way to use that. And then there's a lot more other ways to use this with your sales team. It's actually in the guide that I'm going to um, give you the QR code to. Uh, so I suggest you download the guide and take a look and um, help your sales team by using intent data. Here's the QR code again if you didn't get a chance to scan it before. And a couple testimonials of folks who have been working with us in using intent data or uh, high quality leads that we offer as part of the program as well. So I highly encourage you to reach out to um, one of your uh, one of the folks at, at the event um, from PeerSpot. Ask a couple more questions about intent data or high quality leads. We're happy to answer those. Thanks.